Hey there guys, so finally this Jürgen Bremer versus Rob Brandt Super 6, um, sorry, World Boxing Super Series fight has been made official. Uh, the fight's going to be taking place in Germany. Uh, it was originally specu speculated that it was going to be taking place in America, but thankfully it's taking place in Germany because I really can't be bothered staying up till 4 in the morning to watch it, so I'll be able to watch it live now. So that's good. Uh, I think this is uh, one of the more intriguing fights in the Super Middleweight Tournament. Now, I'm a heck of a lot more interested in the Cruiserweight Tournament than I am in the Super Middleweight Tournament because I think a lot of the fights in the Super Middleweight one, to me, are just mismatches. I mean, uh, George Groves versus Jamie Cox, in my opinion, that fight's a complete mismatch. I see nothing that Jamie Cox can do to win that fight. Um, Jamie Cox is basically a novice to me. He doesn't belong at Super Middleweight. Um, I, I think he's going to get completely embarrassed in that fight. I really do. Uh, Avni Yildirim, I don't see him being competitive with Eubank. Uh, I think that Eubank is too quick. You know, his, his, his hands are just too fast. Uh, you know, he's got a, a big advantage in terms of foot speed. Uh, Yildirim is going to be coming forward with a tight guard, just like Arthur Abraham was. And we all know how that turned out. Uh, Eubank's just going to get around that guard with hooks to the body. And he's going to school him. It's going to be easy. So... Um, yeah, I, I'm not even going to bother doing videos for those fights. But this fight between Jürgen Bremer and Rob Brandt, this fight to me is very intriguing and it's very competitive. And there's a lot of uncertainty here because Jürgen Bremer, and I mentioned this in my uh, my post-fight review for the Callum Smith-Eric Scoglin fight, because uh, Callum Smith is going to be facing the winner of this fight in the next stage. I think that there's a lot of uncertainty with Jürgen Bremer. Jürgen Bremer is 38 years old. He's been out of the ring for a year now. Um, his last fight he lost by uh, pulling out against Nathan Cleverly with an injured shoulder. Or was it an injured elbow? I think it was an injured elbow. So he's coming off a, a long layoff with an injury. He lost his last fight. He's moving down in weight from light heavyweight to a, di to a division that he hasn't fought in in something like a decade. I, th I think even more than a decade. I can't remember. I I'm pretty sure it's been a very long time since uh, since Jürgen Bremer boxed at super middleweight. I think back when he fought Mario Veidt, something like that. It was a long time since he fought at super middleweight. So it's going to be a, a struggle getting down in weight. But not only that, those are not the only issues for Jürgen Bremer here. Another issue is that he's a full-time trainer. He trains a lot of fighters over in Germany now. He's actually the full-time trainer for WBA super middleweight champion Tyron Zeuge, who's uh, supposed to be defending his title in a rematch against Ekpo in November. So uh, clearly, uh, Jürgen Bre he also has a few prospects in Germany too. So clearly, Jürgen Bremer, the guy's very busy. Um, it's going to be very difficult for him to be a fighter and a trainer at the same time. So, um, you know, when you take all that into consideration, the fact that he's 38 years old, he's moving down in weight to a division he won't be comfortable at, um, he's coming off a long layoff and an injury and a defeat, it really doesn't bode well for him going into this fight, does it? Now, what, what does he have in his, in his advantage here? Obviously, he has a, a lot of experience. Jürgen Bremer was a long-time uh, champion and contender at light heavyweight. Uh, he was a WBO champion back in the day. He defeated Aleski Kuziemski. Um, I think that was who he, he won that title from. Um, he was due to defend it against Nathan Cleverly the first time. However, he had to pull out of the fight with a cut, and he ended up losing his title. Uh, he came back, won the European title, uh, and then he, he then won the WBA light heavyweight title and defended that for a couple of years. So obviously he has a lot of championship level experience. Um, he was a very good amateur too. He had something like 100 amateur fights and he was, I believe, an amateur world champion. He beat people like Ricky Hatton, Carl Froch. Uh, you know, he was a, a very, very good international amateur, Jürgen Bremer was. So, uh, you know, obviously this is a guy with so much more experience than Rob Brand that it's unreal. I mean, Rob Brand hasn't had anywhere near the amount of experience by comparison. Um, obviously, um, he's also got the, uh, the the home advantage. That's another another perk that he has in this fight. The fight's going to be in Germany, like I said. Uh, Jürgen Bremer has never actually boxed outside of Germany, I believe. I believe every single fight in his career has been in Germany. And, and it's quite strange because he's actually been set to fight outside of Germany a few times. I remember he was set to fight Tommy Oosterhausen in, 
in Monaco, however, Oosterhausen pulled out of that fight with an injury, so that never happened. And uh, I mentioned earlier that he was set to fight cleverly the first time. That was set to happen in London. So he has been set to fight outside of Germany a couple of times. It just hasn't materialised. So um, obviously, yeah, he's going to have a home advantage here. I don't believe that that Rob Brandt has ever boxed outside of America before. So that might be a, a psychological disadvantage for him since he's going to be travelling for the first time. But... You know, from what I see from Rob Brandt, I'm very impressed. Uh, I watched his fight recently against uh, Delroy Reigns. That, that's a guy I've known for a, for a while. I actually used to talk to that guy on Facebook. He's um, uh, quite a well-known journeyman in America, and um, Rob Brandt took him out in a round. I've also watched some of his other fights. Uh, you, you know, you'll, you'll notice right away that Rob Brandt's fights have been a, a very low standard. He hasn't really fought anybody that's worth mentioning. Um, yeah, just, just hasn't stepped up yet in his career, but... Just based on the eye test, from what I see from Rob Brand, he's got a devastating, and I mean devastating, straight right hand. Uh, his straight right hand is a very dangerous punch, and since he's going up against a southpaw, that's going to be interesting because uh, Jürgen Bremer, you know, coming off a long layoff and an injury, he could be susceptible to that straight right hand. He's also got a decent jab, uh, you know, a nice tight guard. He's a he's a throws very good combinations on the inside. He's got very good power. It's very hard for a middleweight, super middleweight. He's competed in both divisions. So, um, yeah, it's very, very hard. Um, but, you know, it's, it's hard to really say how he'll do at this level. I mean, you know, I, I mentioned before how, you know, he doesn't have much international experience. He's only really fought at domestic level in America. And, uh, yeah, a lot of uncertainty about him. But just based on the eye test, he seems to have very good power. Seems to have good stamina. He's he's definitely fundamentally sound. Um, it'll be interesting to see how he handles the 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 awkward southpaw style of Jurgen Bremer because not only is Jurgen Bremer a southpaw, but Jurgen Bremer is a master of ha of uh, setting up that left hand. I mean, he's really really it, it's just beautiful the way he sets it up, man. I mean, t take a look at fights like um his fight against Tony Avalon, for example. That fight was for the. Uh, for the European title, I've actually got that fight uploaded on my channel. Just look at how how quickly Bremer was able to take him out with left hands to the body. Uh, look, look also at his fight with Paweł Glazowski. I mean, Bremer takes him out quickly in the first round with a, a left to the body. It's the way that he sets up that left. You don't see it coming, and it's it's very difficult to avoid. I mean, even even cleverly, you know, had a heck of a lot of trouble avoiding that left hand. Um, Enzo Macronelli, I've got that fight uploaded too got absolutely fucked up by that left hand. It was hitting him all night. He just couldn't adjust to it. Um, you know, take, take a look at his, uh, his fight against Robin Krasniki too. And Robin Krasniki is a very good European level fighter. And uh, Jürgen Bremer took him out in the ninth round with a counter right hook. And that, that's another one of Bremer's danger shots is his counter right hook. But I think the money shot is the straight left. And it's going to be very interesting to see how how uh, Rob Brand can deal with that because obviously with with Bremer just having so much more experience with him having such an awkward style that relies on technique and boxing skill rather than athleticism it's going to be interesting to see um I really don't know like really who to pick in this fight because like I said there's so much uncertainty we don't know how Rob Brand's going to be at world level we don't know how Jürgen Bremer's going to be with all the all the stuff he's got going on but if I was to take just a you know a wild, just a wild swing at this one, if I was to take a wild guess, I guess I would have to go at this stage, and this may change during the build up. At this stage, I would have to go with Rob Brandt, and the reason why is because I just cannot see Jurgen Bremer at 38 years old moving down in weight with injuries, with long layoffs, with uh, commitments as a trainer, you know, with all that stuff going on. I just can't see him being at his best. I can't see him being able to operate at an elite level. I mean, him going into this tournament, I've got to say, was kind of silly. Because even if he is able to get past Rob Brand, which isn't an easy job, he, he you know he got a, a real bad draw picking Rob Brand as his first fight. But even if he's able to get past Rob Brand, is he going to be able to beat the likes of George Groves and uh, Chris Eubank Jr. and Callum Smith and whatnot? Is he going to be able to beat these guys? Is he at his age and with all the stuff he's got going on? I really don't think so. So I can't really see. Um, I, I I just can't really see Jurgen Bremer making a lot of noise in this tournament. I, I really think that the Sauerlands 
probably just threw him in there for the sake of it. You know, I, I don't think that they, they think he can win. Uh, the Sowlands, to me, when I listen to Kala Sowland in his interviews, he seems to think that, that George Groves is the man to win the tournament. And, uh, I mean, he's, he, he's got other fighters in the tournament. Like, he had Eric Scoglin, who just lost to, to Callum Smith by decision. And, of course, Jürgen Bremer. But he doesn't seem to believe in those guys at all. Yeah, you, you listen to all his interviews, and all he ever talks about is Groves. It's as if it's as if Kala Sowland has already made up his mind that he wants George Groves to, to win this tournament. So, I don't even think that Bremer's own promoter thinks he can win this tournament. So... You know, I'm, I'm going to go with Rob Brandt to win the fight, probably by a decision or a late stoppage. But, you know, I, I think if Jürgen Bremer was at his prime, if this was the same Jürgen Bremer that, that took out Tony Avalon, for example, I think that version of Jürgen Bremer would, would have would have easily won this fight, in my opinion. But I just think he's too far past his prime. And I can't see him uh, being able to pull off this victory at this at this stage. And even if he does pull off the victory... Um, I don't see him going very far in this tournament. So let me know what you guys think about this one anyway. It is an interesting fight and I'm looking forward to it. I'll definitely check the fight out. Thanks for watching, guys.